The practice question is set number 19. Question number one gives us six different graphs of electric field or magnetic field versus time. We want to know which of these graphs will produce electromagnetic radiation. We have three key words that we've talked about a few times now. What are those three key words that describe for us the, the basic nature of electromagnetic radiation? Number one was accelerating, right? Accelerating electric charges generate what? Changing electric and changing magnetic fields. Uh, we have to have the charged particles accelerating because otherwise we wouldn't get the changing nature of the electric and magnetic fields. And if we don't have the changing nature, then we don't get EMR. We just get enough two fields, electric and magnetic fields. What's the third one? Accelerating charged particles generate changing electric and magnetic fields that are perpendicular to each other and perpendicular to the direction of motion of that wave. Now let's look at this question with that in mind now. Which of these graphs do you think will produce EM radiation? Which key word is it that leads us to the answer? Changing. Yeah, changing. In question, or in uh, graph one, do we have a changing electric or changing magnetic field? Yes. Even though it's not sinusoidal, that's still changing. That will generate EMR because we have a changing electric field. What about number two? No, oh, that's a uniform magnetic field. That will not produce EMR. What about number three? Yeah, this is what we're used to seeing, right? A sinusoidal electric field. That will produce EMR for sure. It doesn't have to be sinusoidal, although that's what we're used to seeing. Any changing electric or magnetic field will generate EMR. What about four? Is that changing? No. What about five? Is that changing? Yep. It's, it's constantly changing, but it's changing. So that's going to generate EMR. What about six? Yeah, that's changing as well. So our answer is going to be one, three, five, and six. Our answer is going to be D for this one. That makes sense? Two, a strong or intense source of gamma rays would most likely indicate what? An explosion has occurred? Eh, maybe. A strong gravitational field is present? No, nah, that doesn't have anything to do with gravity, right? Energy is being converted into matter? That sounds pretty good, doesn't it? What's wrong with that? It's the opposite, right? It's matter being converted into energy, not energy being converted into matter. So the answer for that one is D. Three, the relative direction of the electric and magnetic field components of EMR is? Oh, wait, this is keyword number... Three? What is it? Perpendicular. So the answer is either going to be C or D. Now, without even reading the rest of the question, I would guess the answer is going to end up being D, because perpendicular is almost always our answer here, right? Well, let's read the rest of the question just to make sure. Relative to the directions of the electric and magnetic fields, the direction of the motion of the energy is, yeah, that's perpendicular. So the answer is D, as I thought. Honestly, like, you could have guessed this question, like, pretty safely without even reading any part of the question. And when you see four options that involve perpendicular and parallel, the answer is almost certainly going to be perpendicular, perpendicular. Like, there's very few situations where it wouldn't be that. Uh, number four, which of the following sets of EMR is arranged in order of increasing frequency? Increasing frequency. Uh, you know it's not going to be A or C, right? Because you can't start at the highest and go up from there. So what's it going to be? Radio ultraviolet? Gamma? Radio gamma ultraviolet. B, yeah. And last one. This is a good one. High energy particle accelerators can be used to, do, to accelerate protons to close to the speed of light. Magnetic fields are used to produce a circular path that these protons follow. And then this uh, talks about this LHC, the Large Hadron Collider, accelerates protons to 7 tera electron volts. EMR, known as synchrotron radiation, is generated by these large accelerators. This radiation is created by what? Three key words. First one is the important one here. Acceleration. So we're looking for something that's acceleration, right? By large electric current generating magnetic field? No. If 
from the change in the mass of the protons as they increase in speed? No. That actually happens. As these protons accelerate to close to the speed of light, they get a lot heavier. But that's not what generates the EMR. Yeah. Yeah. As, as, as more and more energy is pumped into it, less and less of that energy goes into speeding it up, and more of it gets, gets converted to mass. So as you get infinitely close to the speed of light, um, you get infinitely close to the amount of energy that's being pumped in to being converted to mass rather than being converted to kinetic energy. So yeah, that, that's right. That's why you can't go faster than the speed of light. C, by the protons as they move in a circular path of the accelerator, look at sec, as they go in a circle, they experience uh, centripetal acceleration toward the center of the circle. Wouldn't that generate EMR? That sounds pretty good. Let's just check D. From the change in radius as the protons increase in speed, you got to be careful on this one, right? Increase in speed, that's acceleration, right? That, that's going to generate EMR. But like, it's, it's almost semantics in this question, but it's kind of mean, actually, the way they phrase this. From the change in radius as the protons increase in speed. This question doesn't say, or this option doesn't say, the radiation is created by the increase in speed. This question says, or this option says, the radiation is created by the change in radius due to the increase in speed. You could say acceleration is produced by an increase in speed, but, it's, but uh, EMR is not produced by a change in radius that is caused by an increase in speed. Does that make sense? So the answer for this question is C, by the centripetal acceleration as the object goes in a circle. Thank you.